is. Okay, um, members of council? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Don't leave that all to the community center. I told them, yeah, they're coming December 1st, 2018. <laughs> Good evening, members of council. I see that we have quorum, and I call this regular meeting for the Committee of the Whole to order. It has been moved by Council Ribiak that the agenda for the March 7, 2016 Committee of the Whole meeting be adopted as circulated. Any additions, changes to the agenda? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. The next item is disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Do any members have any conflicts of interest that they need to disclose at this time? No, Mr. No. Can that be so noted that there are no conflicts? Thank you. The first item has been moved by Councillor King that the Committee of the Whole receives the issue summary report for information as it pertains to the application file number AMSP 0815, part of lots 161 and 166, part of road allowance between lots 161 and 166, now the Town of Pelham, and part of lots 166 and 167, and part of lot 3, plan 717 Town of Pelham, municipally known as 130 Highway 20 East, and the committee direct planning staff to prepare the bylaw and site plan agreement, authorizing the mayor and clerk to enter into a site plan agreement between the Town of Pelham and Farn Herald Gardens, Inc., and the council approve the bylaw and enter into a site plan agreement with Farn Hill Gardens, Inc. Questions, comments regarding the site plan? I have a couple of questions for the director. Um, the, the regional uh, letter made some comment about waste collection. Uh, were those, I didn't really see it in the report, were, those were dealt with in the report and are they using new technology or different technology? Can you just talk about that? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mary, through you. Uh, waste collection uh, on this uh, site will not be done by the region. It will be done by a private uh, contractor, so um, that's how the waste will be managed. So they don't need to meet the regional uh, requirements under the regional bylaw. Okay, thank you. Um, the design of the of the building, the facades, etc., doesn't overtly say it. So does it meet our design guidelines for the area? Um, yes, uh, we did meet with. Um, I guess it was with uh, Metro. Um, uh, about a week and a half ago and met with them to review the building elevations. Um, we did have some concern with their elevations and as a result of that meeting um, there were some refinements made to the uh, elevations that are now more in line and in keeping with the urban design guidelines uh, for the this area. Uh, so the material um, do meet the uh, uh, suggested uh, materials for the uh, out of the urban design guidelines, uh, same with the color palette. Okay, thank you. So the refinements are before us, is that correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. Um, there's a lot of parking. Is that the required amount of parking? Is I, I imagine there's some additional parking for um, expansion, etc. Uh, that would be the required parking taking into consideration the expanded area. Um, and the number of loading spaces meet the required loading spaces in our zoning bylaw as well. So there isn't um, excess parking beyond what they're planning in accordance with our uh, zoning bylaw requirements. Okay, thank you. Uh, now what about, there, there is some reference in the report Madam Director, about uh, bicycle racks and yes. things like that. Um, and I note that, that there will be a trail in, uh, in front of the development on Regional Road 20 and along Wellspring Way, et cetera. But uh, what about in the, in the center of the development in terms of walkability, cyclability? It, it's stated as a, uh, something that we're trying to achieve. Um, is, you know, is that achieved? What, what, what would... So within the uh, actual site plan agreement, um, there is provision for bicycle parking, the requirement for uh, bicycle parking. Uh, within um, kind of at each of the kind of pads of the buildings, uh, so there will be multiple areas where there will be bicycle parking made available. So it's not just in front of the 
you know, the main store. Okay. So just, just for walkability, there's, uh, we don't have it on the screen here, but, but for example, here's the, um, here's the grocery, here's a path that goes, you know, is, does that connect all the way through or do you have to go into the drive, driving area, et cetera? How, how walkable is the site? Um, the site, we've uh, certainly tried to ensure that we achieve walkability um, both through the site and um, out of the site to mm -hmm. other areas because uh, we are certainly, as you know, uh, planning the Vernurf in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a community center diagonally across the road. So there will be the provision certainly for our sidewalks um, in front of all the, uh, the buildings. Um, there's a provision for walking areas through the parking lot mm. and as well connecting through uh, off the site. So that is being provided for. Okay, so those are where the where the walking paths go. Those are actual paths in front of the yes, in front, in front of the vehicles. You can get and then this way and across. So it's that's correct. So okay, you have so that interconnection throughout. That the helps site. with the movement. Okay, those are those were some of my major concerns, and it looks like that you've uh, mm -hmm. you've addressed them. Thank you very much, Councilor Riviak. You have thank you. Just a question questions? for uh, for information uh, and through you to the to the planning director as well. Planning A, the supermarket uh, is, um, sorry, building A, the supermarket, has uh, some space allocated for future expansion, I guess at some point when it's appropriate for them. Can you just comment on how that, that piece of land will be dealt with between now and the time that it's actually expanded? What's it going to look like? It's just adjacent to the, to the public square, and so it's important, I guess, that it be, be treated properly. What are the plans with regard to that? So that area will be landscaped. Um, so it'll be um, there'll be certainly lawn area, but also planting beds would be put in alongside the uh, the building, again to kind of um, soften the mass of the building along Wells Spring Way. Uh, so we want some landscaping there. There will be clustering of uh, trees uh, provided as well at uh, either end of that building, again, to uh, provide some variety and interest and to break up that uh, long wall of building. So for the temporary time being period, it will be finished off as a landscaped area. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And again, through you, Mr. Mayor, and the wall itself, is, is there any any treatment to the wall to give it any any interest or is it a big blank wall right there? So no, there is some uh, treatment with the wall. This is one of the areas where we did meet with uh, Metro to get them to uh, change the um, elevations of that wall. It was one long um, wall with very little um, uh, um, change in the articulation of the material in the building and so they are introducing uh, at each end of the wall is um, certainly a, um, you know, a pillar type of uh, treatment and then halfway through the wall as well will be pillar type treatments with uh, introducing brick and changing the materiality of the uh, and the color palette to give it again that variety and interest in breaking it up. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the director? Thank you for answering our questions and working together with the, uh, the developer. We're going to call the question. All those in favor? You opposed that motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved by Councilor Ribiak that Committee of the Whole receive the February 2016 Planning and Development Services Report for information. Comments or questions to that report? Councilor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just give me a second to, to find it on the uh, on, on my report. Through you to uh, to the planning director. I note that, that she attended a meeting regarding land use and planning for the airport that was hosted by the region. So I have a question with regard to, to that, if I may. Um, in, in, in the discussion with the region and elsewhere, is there any discussion of, um, uh, of, of the issue of zoning height restrictions with respect to the airport? We know, for example, that um, in our neighboring um, municipality, there are uh, wind turbines going up that are of really uh, impressive uh, stature. And I think that those, if located within the uh, approach lanes to the, to the runways of the airport, would create tremendous hazards. So I'm just wondering whether um, there are or has there been any thought given to 
uh, the kinds of zoning restrictions that might be uh, necessary in order to preserve those uh, those approaches. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, um, this airport is one of the ones where we don't have any uh, height regulations that are imposed through uh, Nav Canada. Um, in certain airports, they do have height uh, limitations and restrictions along their um, flight paths and their approaches uh, to the uh, to the airport along the runway approaches. So that did actually was a question that came up um, when we had the meeting at the region. We were meeting with the consultants uh, that the region has retained um, who are looking at uh, both airports here in, uh, in Niagara, the one uh, Niagara Central here in Pelham, as well as the Niagara District uh, Airport in Niagara-on-the-Lake. <coughs> and that was a question that they did ask of us is whether or not we have any um, restrictions in our zoning bylaw with respect to height uh, within the um, approaches of the uh, runway. Uh, currently our zoning bylaw does not and uh, it is something that during our conversations and discussions it was suggested that uh, perhaps it should be something that we consider. Uh, it would also have to be something that we need to take into consideration with the Township of Waynefleet uh, given where the airport is located. Basically, on the other side of the uh, Welland River is the uh, um, <coughs> municipality of Waynefleet, and the uh, approaches uh, to the runway are also along that. Uh, and within their jurisdiction and border. So um, it is something to certainly consider in terms of amending our zoning bylaw to have some uh, limitations with respect to height for those kinds of structures. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So what I'm hearing is that it would be useful, I guess, um, uh, for the future of that airport that uh, perhaps we give some consideration to uh, the kinds of height restrictions that might be be placed to whatever degree we can uh, as municipality along the uh, uh, the approaches it's not a question of uh, saying yes or no to, uh, <coughs> to any particular kind of structure in particular just a matter of, of maybe preserving those flight paths so that uh, the airport can um, remain in, in a state at least not of, of, of jeopardy as a result of that kind of development and so I'm wondering whether um, whether it might be useful for for us as council to perhaps give direction to the planning to maybe consider what kind of uh, zoning would be useful in this regard and come back with a report I think the 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 directors indicated that they're currently doing the comprehensive zoning bylaw um, does it so if it, it'll tie in in that way will it not will it uh, that would be interesting to know it is certainly something that we can uh, address through the comprehensive zoning bylaw process yes good so perhaps uh, all that needs to happen is that a note be made that, mm -hmm. that that be considered in the comprehensive zoning bylaw and that we take whatever means we can to to protect those uh, those approaches and I think uh, through you mr. mayor the, uh, the director of planning has indicated that um, this there would be some some reaching out to uh, to our neighbor to the south, Wayne Fleet, uh, so that they might do the same with regard to the approaches from uh, from the south. Okay, thank you, Madam Director. Can you yes, consider can, that as you? We could certainly take that off? under uh, you know direction from council to certainly reach out to um, uh, the township of Wayne Fleet. Um, they have a reasonably new zoning bylaw that was adopted probably about two two years ago now, um, so I can certainly engage in those conversations and discussions with. What what I what I'd suggest um, is, is actually, I don't want to just have council just say yeah go ahead and do it and then we don't know what the ramifications are. So I think what the councilor indicated was it could be or I indicated and the councilor agreed that it could be considered in the zoning comprehensive zoning bylaw. So if that can be brought forward or considered, then if council makes a determination that it wants to do it in Pelham, and we can also at the same time perhaps give direction to staff. So I'd prefer it be done that way, if that's okay for, that's fine. for all involved, as mm -hmm. opposed to reaching out and then council says, ah, no, we don't want to do that. So, so if you can just consider it and bring it forward as an item <coughs> in the comprehensive zoning bylaw when it comes to uh, the council and the public, in uh, April, May, I yeah. think it'd be helpful then. And then, if council wants to give direction at that point, we can do that. See how it looks in our community. If that's okay, councillor. Absolutely. I'm. I'm really concerned that this be not overlooked, right? Because the airport, I think, is a tremendous asset both to 
to ourselves as a municipality and to the region generally. And to let something like that slip uh, would be would, would be difficult, I think, to explain afterwards. So if we can do it earlier rather than later, just don't want it to get away on us. Okay. Thank you very much. Councillor Durley, to that issue? Uh, yes. I, okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, yeah, I seem to recall that there are some height restrictions in the industrial zone properties on Weber Road because of the... Uh, because of the airport, and I, I could be wrong, but I know in my uh, uh, in dealings with the other uh, uh, job that I did have that uh, I ran into uh, specific zonings in that particular case, and it probably is not enough because we're looking at uh, broader areas for for approaches in that. But I think the and it, of course the new zoning bylaw will will knock the old one out anyway, but uh, I believe there was some consideration given to some of that, especially in the industrial zone properties in Orbe Road. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, through you, you're quite correct. It is there in the industrial um, zoned areas, and I believe it's a 10-meter height restriction or limitation. Uh, I think um, what uh, Councillor Ribiak was getting at is, um, you know, some of these... Um, structures that are not regulated through zoning um, okay. they're hard to to manage um, but if we can certainly put something in our zoning bylaw with respect to uh, height limitations and that is a flag when we have some of these other applications that come forward um, and so it is, is something that we can consider then uh, certainly with respect to the buildings in the industrial area and those uh, buildings yes there is Thank you. Point well taken. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else to that issue? Look forward to more coming back. Anyone else in, on other uh, issues in the report? Do you want to talk? Just that to that issue, Councillor Pat? I'm taking it to another level. It's all predicated, as we have over the past number of years, discussed the business case for that airport. And depending on what it evolves into and how it will, in fact, either complement or strengthen the on the Lake Airport, because I'm thinking of, uh, and the council is right, all the restrictions. If you make that a business hub at one point, and depending on what traffic you get there, then those types of zoning applications will have to apply to all the municipalities who have to agree to it, depending on what you're flying in and what you're doing there. Mm -hmm. So I, I am very, very interested, because I've heard the same, we've heard this discussion before, mm -hmm. and now that there's uh, agreement that you can, we can validate two airports, one being, for, I hate to say it, for the southern region, but the other for the other, mm -hmm. and one in each, and you know where I'm going with that, that it does not, uh, how can I say, uh, damage our, the ability of the, that particular airport to be able to expand to its maximum potential. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. So it sounds like we have a mechanism, and it's through the zoning bylaw, and then if, if other directions required in terms of speaking right. with exactly. Wayne, the township of Waynefleet or the township of West Lincoln, uh, and maybe even the city of Welland. Um, those are things that we can consider at that time. Okay. Thank you for raising the issue and for discussing it. Any other items in the uh, director's report that council would like to discuss? <coughs> Councillors would like to discuss? I just want to uh, compliment staff. Um, the number of inspections, 98 inspections, that's, that's a huge number. And yet, as we see again in the uh, building permit timeframes, we're down to average number of days to issue a permit, four. Yeah. It, when we started tracking this, it used to be 10, 11. I know I keep saying this, but it's just a great work. Uh, I call her the expediter upstairs, but uh, <laughs> it certainly helps out and makes sure that everything runs very, very smoothly. So Good. congratulations on how smoothly things are running. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, please pass along thanks to staff for that. Uh, yes, to build on your comments, Mr. Mayor, and what we heard earlier in the day, that your, the development of the site plan manual is critical. We heard from a very prominent business person that one of the key things, and I'll just generalize it, is not to be held up by bureaucratic red tape. Mm -hmm. They want to know exactly when they deal with the municipality and they're developing plans for whatever those, manu whether it's manufactured, that they're clear on how this is to happen. And we were both in agree. all of us were in agreement that mm -hmm. that is a critical part of economic development attraction. Mm -hmm. You can walk in, you expedite it, and the person feels comfortable that their investment's being strongly looked at and that they can go through all the necessary steps without having to be, if you want to call it, side dancing all over the place. So that is, a, I have to tell you, you've done a remarkable job, and I hopefully that that manual that we talked about also will come into fruition 
so that they can say, okay, now we understand how the municipality operates. Thank, Thank you. you. Any, anything further? Thank you, Councillor. Going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Thanks again. Now we move to, it's been moved by Councillor Durley. The Committee of the Whole received the February 2016 Corporate Services Monthly Report for information. Questions or comments? Council Ribiak? Just a, a quick question through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, with regard to, to the water billing uh, within that. Uh, there are a number of, of items um, on the list. Now, how do I identify the page through all of this? Um, this is, uh, these are the st statistics regarding uh, uh, the water billing. There are a number of, of items that, for which there's an impressive number in 2016, <coughs> but nothing for 2015. I'm just wondering why that was. These are uh, notification of leaks, notifications of disconnects, notifications of problem meters, notifications right. of arrears, and, and that sort of thing. There, is, is this a new service that, that we're providing, which is why there are no entries for the previous year, or is there a problem there? Madam Director. You, Mr. Mayor, uh, for with respect to the notifications, uh, they weren't actually tracking the stats at this time in the same period last year. Um, but for the problem meters, as I had indicated previously to council, those are the ones that were under warranty that uh, they had an issue with. They are covering those fully, so there is no cost to the town for those replacements. Okay, so so there's no reason to be concerned that there are entries this year, but none none for no. last year. That's okay. That, that's really all I wanted to know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Others to the report? Uh, just since we're on uh, water and wastewater, uh, three peat of, uh, as, you, as you outlined there, in terms of uh, water and wastewater. I did a little uh, chart that I think I shared with Council and the community this week, I'm trying to find it here. Um, here it is, in terms of uh, comparisons with other communities, and um, half of the communities are about. 20 to 30 percent more and when it comes to water wastewater for the average amount used and the other half are 49 or 50 percent more so uh, we're certainly well positioned in terms of uh, where we are with water wastewater and uh, I think as we discussed last time at our committee meeting um, it's as a result of the, the exceptional work that, that we've done with uh, technology and innovation and uh, continuing to improve the infrastructure so kudos to uh, all the staff that are involved in that uh, and uh, helping us to be uh, a leader in yet another area so thank you very much for that and council did approve that uh, zero increase again um, rate increase not budget increase like they talk about at the region which is really a increase in rate uh, this is a rate uh, zero percent rate change on uh, on water wastewater for the residential side so congratulations um, and thank you it's, there's some notes in that in, in your report finally uh, madam director I had a question about the minutes of settlement reductions from MPAC there was one that you have identified in your report can you fill us in on that at all as soon as I find it in, in the Cal report yeah, it's in the, uh, or maybe you can give us some information on that at another time. It's just, it was one. So just wondering what that minutes of settlement reduction was. Maybe you can send an email to council just on that. That's fine. Thank you. Anything further? There being none, I call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Next, we have moved by Councillor Papp. The Committee of the Whole receives the February 2016 Fire Services Report for information. Questions? Comments? Councillor Papp? No, just a comment um, and through you to the Chief. I'm very, very happy to see, well, happy and sad because I'm familiar with this whole issue of the City of St. Catherine, so the number of cases of WSIB claims within their fire department was resulting a lot of this um, when I was working in Hamilton we had a major fire and most of those firefighters that were involved in that became very ill and, and subsequently passed away their lives were shortened decontamination policies were not 
didn't even exist and they just went in. So I'm happy to see we have an operating guideline and I'm looking forward to whatever can be done to enhance that and strengthen that. Uh, we'll ensure that our firefighters are protected. We have had, as you probably remember, we had a couple of situations out, I believe in Wainfleet, we were involved in a um, lab and uh, those are the kinds of things that we have to be cognizant because these things don't appear until later on when they get sick. So thanks for bringing that up. I'm very, uh, I was surprised. I hadn't heard anything about St. Catharines, mm -hmm. but I, it's, it's climbing, mm -hmm. which is disturbing when you consider, you know, that they're supposed to be with the best equipment. So that's all I have to say about that. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Chief. Others? Uh, first, uh, thanks very much, Chief, for outlining uh, what the service did for uh, Ralph Smith. This is the piece I wanted to, I couldn't find earlier this evening, um, that his um, firefighters across Ontario uh, were attended his funeral and that his final ride was aboard the 1939 pumper truck accompanied by his uh, brothers and sisters at the Palm Station 1 to his final resting place. So thank you very much uh, for the, to the service for honouring uh, one of our uh, long-serving firefighters. Thank you. And I, th I was thinking, Councillor Papp, would is it on that issue, Councillor, or is it a different issue? But a different issue. But different go issue. Ahead. Well, I thought you might raise this regarding the pumper truck to yes, Bearskin. Yes, exactly. Go, go ahead. Um, I'm very, very pleased that it's arrived and been put into service. Uh, they are just, I have to tell you, bewildered. They don't even know what to say. And along those lines, um, I wanted to mention to you that the uh, Mullen Rotary Club, along with the Niagara on the Lake Rotary Club, have jointly agreed that in June, and I'll keep you posted, we will be bringing the uh, grade three and grade four students from Bearskin Lake down here for their annual trip. They have never been to Niagara Falls. They've never been off the reserve. And so we're sponsoring them. And one of the first things they want to do is they want to come here. They want to meet you and will meet all of us. Uh, it's very special to them because uh, they feel that we came in and we helped them. So I will give you the date. It looks like it'll be the third weekend in June. So they're going to go, forgive me, they're going to the Great Wolf Lodge, <laughs> <laughs> sponsored, but they, one of the parts of the trips is they have specifically asked to come here. They want to meet with us and see us and just find out who we are. That's great. why we did that. Maybe we can host something at we the fire We can host, hall. and I'll, I'll talk to you, Mr. Mayor, and the staff about how we could do something for them. So these are the kids that they're protecting. Yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor. And it is, it is great news to see that that uh, pumper has arrived fully decaled, thanks yep. to the uh, Volunteer Firefighters Association uh, in Fenwick at Bearskin Lake um, and is now in service. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear more, I'm sure about uh, their use, et cetera, and um, as you write in your report, Chief, that enhances uh, suppression activities and reduces the risk associated with fire in their communities. So we're just so pleased, and thanks, Councillor Pat Passalong, thanks from Council to the Rotary Club, and uh, Chief, thanks again to the uh, Firefighters Association uh, for the work that, and care that they did in, in preparing the vehicle. And might Thank I add, Mr. Much. Mayor, to that, that the article will appear in Rotary International around the world. I'll give you a copy. Oh. In Rotary Canada, it'll appear as a feature article. So I'll give you copies when we have submitted it. And they are very, they're all over it. So they'll be, uh, you can imagine, all, all around uh, mm -hmm. 2000 clubs, they'll be reading about what we did. Hopefully it will encourage other Others to do exactly to do the same. The same. Thing. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else to the Fire and Bylaw Services report? There being none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item has been moved by Councillor Papp. The Committee of the Whole received the February 2016 Human Resources Department Report for Information. Some charts and answering questions that uh, committee members had last time. Thank you very much for that. It's good stuff. It, it is that curve that we had expected uh, to see in terms of the uh, score distribution. So thank you for that and for answering the questions. Do members of Council, have any questions? We also have the information regarding the compensation strategy and how that's uh, 
how that's working. So thank you for communicating those items to us and answering our questions. Anything further? Great work. Thank you very much. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved by Councilor Ribiak to commit to the whole receive the February 2016 Public Works and Utilities Report for information. Questions, comments regarding anything here? Lots of tenders prepared. Councilor Papp? I, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to the director, I think it's just incredible that you're working with the college on the ash tree, the yes. getting the students yeah. involved and, you know, where they learn in classrooms. Now they're actually learn and practice them. And, uh, and that's fascinating. I, I think that it'll greatly enhance their abilities and hopefully one of these one of those same students will be joining our staff. So very, very nice to see. Very nice. Thank you. Any others to that? Thank you for working with the college. Uh, pl thanks for the update on the engineering standards. We look forward to uh, seeing that information uh, when it comes to us and glad that that's uh, carrying on. So thank you for that. I had a question about the LED, or sorry, the lights. There's a couple of lights here, both, um, where are they here? Pickwick Place and uh, the skate park lighting replacement. I said it already, LED, are those, is it proposed that those are LED lights? Do we, do we know? Mr. Mayor, I don't know offhand. I see somebody nodding their head down the table there. I don't know offhand to this answer. I just don't know what for, okay. finalizing the tender, but we'll find out. Okay, thanks. Or LED. Yeah. Especially after Niagara Falls. Do you die? <laughs> Thank <also>. you. <laughs> Look forward to receiving information about that. Thank you. Councilor Riviak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just just following up on on your your mentioning of LED lights, we do have a project with regard to LED lights on Effingham, don't yes. we? Uh, how's that going? What, what's our findings with regard to that to this point, Madam Director? To you, Mr. Mayor, it's uh, completely off my radar right now. <laughs> <laughs> so so no problems there. Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> Uh, monitoring anything specifically there it came up while we were preparing the 20-year forecast uh, talking about where to put the LED replacement for all the street lights um, and we shifted that around a little bit with the lining with the community center that got pushed out uh, a few more years so we did um, at a conference a few weeks ago get in touch with uh, back in touch with the supplier for that project who was asking how things were going and it got back on my radar from that, but that's all I have to tell you right now. I apologize. I'll make it a note to make sure we get some sort of update brought back. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. I think it's good to know there are no problems in it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no news is good news. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else from the uh, director's report and the excellent work? Question about the Niagara Peninsula contract document meetings. Those are st those are standard documents, and and it's it's what to revise the documents and stay current. Is that what those are about? It is. It's uh, a committee made up of municipal membership, contractors, consultants, and uh, yeah, it's to keep the um, contract docs, the templates, up to mm. date. So we refer to those mm -hmm. so that we don't have to keep revising our purchasing documentation. We just keep pointing out to the group that's doing those updates. They might be technical, it might be uh, updating to new legislation. And so we sit on that group and those documents get forwarded to us. Good. That's what I thought. Thank you. Councilor Drew? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Not part of the report, but we did receive once again a petition for uh, people on pancake and Pelham about the crossings there and there was some hundred hundred and forty names on it uh, Is there any actions that we can will or should be taking on that? It's uh, uh, This is the second time that something has come through and people seem to be dissatisfied that they're not seeing any action Thank you. Yes, I think it was commented on a committee of adjustment and copied to council Madam director Thank you, Mr. Mayor we uh, just discussed it today. We're going we're trying to write a proposal to seek out a traffic consultant um, somewhere a little different, someone who can think outside the box a bit. You might recall we went to the region for the Church Hill crosswalk 
and kind of hit some roadblocks there. So we just today we're trying to piece together what that proposal would look like um, for both the Churchill crosswalk and the Pancake and Pelham intersection. To talk about what data can we collect that gives us an idea of what's happening there from a safety perspective. Um, we'll use some budget. We didn't budget for a, a big project there. It was just really an introductory study to say what can we, what data can we collect and what can we learn and then figure it out from there and plan for budget for next year. Okay, just for public information, it is a work in progress. It hasn't been forgotten. We're working on it. Sure, absolutely, yeah. We very good. Had it on okay, the table people today. might be yeah. re assured or reassured of of that. Definitely, it is receiving some attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor, for raising that. Anything further? There being none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. Been moved by Councillor King. The committee of the whole received the transit sponsorship program information sheet, and the committee recommend the council approve the implementation of the transit sponsorship program. Questions, comments? That's a good idea. Councillor Rubiak, you said it was a good idea. <laughs> 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 It was it was part of the part of the program. I'm pleased that it's now getting uh, implemented. Anything further? Okay. Thank you, uh, Madam Director, for putting that together. And call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item has been moved by Councillor Durley. That committee. The whole, uh, it's the motion is the committee of the whole received the issue sheet regarding the implementation of a culture committee. As a committee of the council and the committee recommend to council that that council support the establishment of a culture committee as a committee of council and the terms of reference or draft terms of reference are outlined here. And thank you, Madam Director, for including a copy of the cultural plan, mm -hmm. which calls for the committee. So thank you. Questions, comments? Councillor. Th yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Rubiak, go ahead. Just, just um, I, I guess, as a point of clarification or, or, or direction with regard to, uh, to the terms of reference, I note that that particularly in the culture plan, there's there's a, a tremendous weighting on the side of culture as an activity to be consumed as opposed to activities to be involved in. And I would hope that the Culture Committee uh, looks at, at the cultural life of Pelham as one in which people have things that they want to do and participate in and present as opposed to just consuming from a stage something that, that's, that's being delivered to them or something passive in the form of uh, buildings and, and, and places. So I would hope that that would be on, on the list of priorities in terms of, of, of how, how to approach uh, the work of the committee. That was the only comment that I wanted to, to make, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any response? Sure. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, that is exactly what we want to um, try to promote. Uh, one of the ideas that we want to do actually this year, once everything is in place, is uh, participate in Culture Days. And culture Days is actually just that. Um, local artists, they would be um, set up in different business, you know, business areas, and they would um, have arts. Um, if it's a um, someone doing pottery, they would have samples of pottery that someone could get their hands dirty and just uh, try it. And um, so we are, that's one of our main um, Objectives this year, if we could. Okay, great. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councillor Drilly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Reading the report, is this an advisory committee or an action committee? It appears that they're taking a lot of actions that are going to be uh, generated through. Uh, collective leader synergies that these people are going to bring to the table. So, uh, you know, there, there should be a definition as to what it is. The Canada Day Committee is an action committee. Is this going to be similar to that? Good point. 
Good point. Madam Director? Through you, Mr. Mayor. This, this committee will be a advisory committee to council um, to suggest um, ways of implementing the cultural master plan and in being that there may be subcommittees out of this group to work on projects such as um, culture days or um, different initiations to promote the arts and culture in the community. It'll be a combination of both, then. It'll be action as a result of advisory. Okay. Okay, thank you. Councilor Gurley, just to that, do you think we should call it an advisory committee, Pelham Culture Advisory Committee? And it's interesting. I'll let you think about that because the, the culture plan calls it, as the report does, committee slash roundtable, um, which even has a different connotation. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good one. It, it's Maybe I'll throw it out for all of council. You don't have to be the one on the spot for that. Yeah, but, uh, definitely <laughs> going to be actions taken. So uh, it, it maybe would be in a category of its own. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> in, in other committees, often we we've used the word advisory to indicate this is a this is an advisory committee. Um, Councillor Paff, you want to weigh in on that? Sure. I, I, I don't want to simplify, but only to add and picking up on exactly what <coughs> Councillor Durley's. If it's an advisory committee, then it will be undertaking uh, work that could very well be part of a governance and policy driven. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're asking us, I'm thinking of the Pelham Seniors Advisory. I mean, they suggest things that we need to do an aging and aging strategy for those are governance things. So if that's exactly plus. On the other side of the coin, if it's like Councilor is strictly action that they can, then maybe there is nothing to that. So I'm trying to decipher yeah. uh, if, in fact, this plan, which we spent a considerable amount of money and time on, mm -hmm. if it's driving sort of the, the governance side of these are the policies that we would like to see the town, we as, a, as town directors like to see implemented as part of our strategy, then that changes the nature of this committee. Mm -hmm. So it has some not an elevated level of importance and influence because it will be an influence to us because they come to us and say we would like you to do da -da 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 with the summer fest we want you to consider these things we want and budget for them I'm, I'm not putting words in your mouth as soon as that starts that becomes part of of a governance approach then advisory is fits them fits the mold I don't know Okay. I'm, I'm kind of lost. I, thank you. Councillor Durley and then Ribiak. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Perhaps staff should have a look at the terms of reference because there is, right. the, I think, a dual role there. And I think we can look at, uh, you know, one side of the scale being an advisory. And when advisory turns to action, I think there, there could be a time frame or a, a, a point at which advisory after consulting with council becomes mm -hmm. action and uh, that may be able to be defined a little better in terms of reference if we have another closer look at it. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Ribiak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was, I was a little less um, confused, I guess, with respect to the advisory aspect of, of this committee because the purpose reads to serve as a committee to advise Pelham Town Council mm -hmm. and staff. Mm -hmm. So I took it uh, for granted that we were dealing with an advisory committee and I was happy that it was going to be an advisory committee. Uh, it seems to me that the purpose uh, or the, 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 the <coughs> outcome of a committee like this is that they would bring to council their recommendations as to what kind of activities that we ought to be budgeting for and supporting and perhaps setting up other committees mm -hmm. to, to take action with regard as opposed to asking a group of people to go out and create uh, the, 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 the cultural activities or, 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 the, or the background of, of the town. Um, so I would be um, highly supportive of, of calling it an advisory committee or including that and that, that we be very clear that what we're asking a committee like this to do is to bring back to council their recommendations as mm -hmm. to which direction to go in as opposed to feeling it's their role to go out and uh, do stuff uh, that, that, that they feel that they, 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 they ought to have the uh, purview to go ahead and initiate and complete. Okay. Councillor King, ladies first, and then Councillor Gurley. To you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think I also see it as an advisory committee, um, partially because it needs to support the strategic efforts. Um, That's right. Yeah. That's right. That being said. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Gurley, anything further? 
the, yes, the intention of my question, Mr. Mayor, was not to uh, give this committee power to initiate any function or any event. It was to, uh, in fact, these people are experts in the area, likely, that are going to be doing this. And, and uh, for that particular point, they will be taking action because the potters know what to do with the pottering. We don't and much of staff doesn't. So, in fact, that's the action portion that I was referring to. Okay. Uh, I don't, didn't want to be misunderstood that they're going to go and plan things and do it on their own. Yes, they advise us as to what would be uh, beneficial to the town or to different groups within the town, and w with our approval, they would go ahead and arrange a cultural day or a pottery day or whatever. This was, this was the intent of my question, not a point to give them uh, uh, power to act on anything other than the fact of, uh, you know, bringing it forward and then, with the approval, to to go forward with the uh, with the event as as they see fit. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you for the clarity. Any others, uh, Councillor Papp? Just to build on uh, exactly, Councillor Dirty, what I'm saying is that Pelham Seniors Advisory, we have uh, terms of reference, we have a strat plan, and we come to you and we ask you exactly that. They come to you and say, we would like to do these things, and that has council approval, and you're right. We, it's not, you're right, we don't take it upon ourselves to go out and to do whatever they want to do. So I think maybe we are spinning our wheels to that. It is an advisory committee, exactly, Councillor King, as you say, and let's stay, stick with that. I mean, maybe, Madam Clerk, you can clear up for us uh, the definition of advisory committee. Is that right. part and parcel of what it does? Because I know you do an excellent job. You explain to us what our roles are. Is that fair to say? I'm putting you on the spot uh, at $1,000 yeah, an hour. I mean, council, <laughs> council does have a policy, and that's where Councilor Durley started with right. different types of committees. So um, I don't know if you're prepared to answer the question now, but perhaps I'll bring it back, maybe right. staff can look at it just to bring see it back. where it fits yeah. in with that. Uh, and bring it, bring it to council. Perhaps that uh, doesn't come back to twenty-first. Yeah, yeah. Just with that information, and how does it align with uh, okay. with the policy that we have for the two types of committees with where council really started? Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, question about the makeup. Very pleased to see that members of the business community, because uh, one might not think that that would be the case. One might think that it would just include those involved in in the delivery of, of culture itself as opposed to maybe a venue for culture or, or things like that as some of our businesses have. So very pleased to see that. And that is outlined in the culture plan. Um, what does a new Pelham resident mean? What does new mean? Does new mean a baby? Does new mean somebody that's been here less than X years? Does new, like? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we want to uh, encourage new residents to uh, get involved in the community when they arrive. It is a, um, a uh, encouragement for them to um, uh, be welcomed into the community. And many um, new residents feel, how can I get involved? Mm -hmm. And if we promote new residents on our um, committees, um, we also uh, will uh, receive new ideas as well. Mm -hmm. new, um, <coughs> I, I'm, I'm not, I guess what I'm thinking about is more, there's a group in town called the Pelham Newcomers yeah. Club, right. which is probably about 12 years old. And people have been on that group. It's for that for those twelve years. So how does one move from a new Pelham resident to a like That's what after two years you don't you take somebody off or like how does that how does that work? So <laughs> it's not the intention to to take them off. It's it's when the committee is at the term of council, the committee will be uh, right. looked at again, and applications will be received and new residents would be considered as well again. Okay. Um, perhaps some wording to say that new residents or residents new to the community are strongly encouraged to participate as opposed to or to apply mm -hmm. opposed to a special category new resident. Councillor, to that. 
And to that, yeah, to, to that, absolutely. And, and in fact, uh, listening to that rationale, it, it, it occurs to me that when we look at our overall policy with regard to, uh, to committees, maybe that, that's something that we ought to install for all of them, that, uh, that people who are new, newer uh, moving into this town uh, have an opportunity to put their oar in the pond alongside mm -hmm. those who have been here for generations and, 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 and want to do that. I think, I think it makes great sense. Mm -hmm. I think it should be a general application as opposed to maybe specific to this committee only. Okay. Thank you. It's interesting when one thinks back, as I mentioned earlier, to the citizen citizens of the year. I think about Mr. Wink, who was had a job new to the community and wanted to get actively involved in the community, and that was eight years ago, and now eight years later he's a citizen of the year. Same with Mr. Uh, Fred Disher. Um, I recall having conversations with yep. him, and you see it in the paper where... How did you, why, why did you get him? Well, I moved to town. I wanted to meet people, and I got involved. Yep. You know, so a lot of new people to the community do end up doing that. So it, you know, it is, and they are such great resources and advocates in our community. So, if, if maybe the wording can be kind of nuanced, and uh, you're quite right, maybe the overarching policy needs to say, you know what, we want mm -hmm. folks that are long-time residents, but also new to the community as well. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so. There will be a couple of changes uh, or refinements made, but can we move this uh, forward and expect those to come to Council? We're going to call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. The next item is to move by Councillor Durley. The committee will receive the issue sheet providing the Christmas and Pelham final report for information. Congratulations on uh, Christmas in Pelham. Some great uh, numbers there, growth, uh, excellent work by uh, many departments as well. Certainly the promotions for that and the communications of that was a huge part of that. So thank you, Ms. McKnight, for that. And uh, Ms. Van Ravensway for overseeing a lot of that, but so many departments are involved and staff are involved in that. I've rambled on, and I'm, and I'm presuming Council would have gotten caught up to speed on where that is in the agenda. <laughs> Are there any other comments um, or questions? Councillor? No? no, I can't. Councillor Papp is very, uh, very pleased to see that the numbers again went up uh, for, the, uh, for the special evening that we had. So are we ready for calling the question? Look forward to, I'm going to call the question and look forward to uh, 2016 Christmas in Pelham. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved by Councilor King that committed the whole receive the February 2016 Recreation, Culture and Wellness Department report for information. Comments, questions? <coughs> Pleased to see the uh, Healthy Kids Community Challenge funding moving forward. Look forward to updates on that. Um, Ms. Van Ravensway, you gave us a chart here. It's very difficult to read the transportation pilot grant program. I don't know if anybody else had trouble. I tried to blow it up and I mean enlarge it, I should say, <laughs> on my screen. Um, <laughs> Perhaps uh, the schedule that can be circulated or a higher level font or something can be added to the report. Ms. Van Ravensway, you want to comment on that? The grant program? For you, Mr. Mayor, this is actually um, the new schedule that you'll find oh, okay. everywhere now. Um, and yes, it should have been. I, I, I can blow, sorry, I can enlarge it. You can't see it. I just I, can't I read it that. because the. The resolution is low, so if that can just be circulated and make sure it's posted and all that other stuff. Thank you. Councillors, anything on the director's report? We look forward to the Easter egg hunt coming up soon. I'm going to call the question. All those in favour? Any opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. It's been moved by... 
Councillor King, the Committee of the Whole received the February 2016 Clerk's Department Report for information. Questions, <coughs> comments? Thank you for outlining the process regarding Committee of Adjustment. Sorry, that's not committee of adjustment. The, uh, the the chart here. Can you just outline what the how the chart that's here that pre-consult the application intake, Madam Clerk? Certainly, three, Mr. Mayor. That's just an outline of what the um, administrative role of a secretary treasurer is uh, on behalf of the committee of adjustment. So it does uh, specifically reach the, relate to the committee of adjustment function. Thank you. So even after the after the the uh, the hearing and the. The process, there's lots of work afterwards, so thank you very much. Other fun stuff, I think, is how you've <laughs> identified it. <laughs> file maintenance. <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you reviewed those things as fun, so thank you. Anything further? And maybe a shout out uh, regarding the business directory that we do have a newly designed business directory, mm -hmm. Councillor Papp, that I you share worked that on that with the Chamber a long time ago. Um, yeah, it's been a long time. It's, uh, it's wonderful. It's great. Timely. Question to that, it, it talks about how it's related to Google Maps. Um, does it, if one were to go to Google Maps in town, not from the town website, but does it also plug it into that? Or is it only if you're on our website, it puts it in? Does that make any sense? Uh, I do understand the question, Mr. Mayor. I believe it's just through our website okay. to locate the businesses through our website. Okay. It'd be interesting if we could do the next piece because sometimes you're in a community and say, oh, there's hmm, Kentucky Fried Chicken or whatever it is that, that happens to be, whatever one's looking for it, sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'm uh, hungry. But whatever that, that item is, it'd be interesting if there could be an interface to put that information onto Google Maps as well. Follow up with the IT. Okay, thank you. Anything further? I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed, that motion is carried. Thank you. So we move by Councillor Durley, the Committee of the Whole received the February 2016 Chief Administrative Officer's Report for Information. Councillor Durley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, meeting for March the 22nd, is there a venue that has been picked to house that meeting or to host that meeting? Mr. CEO, do you want to start in on that? <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're going to talk about that uh, meeting a little bit. The meeting on the 22nd is a, um, a meeting of council, obviously, and uh, it's a preliminary to have in the chambers. Uh, subsequent, um, uh, subsequent consultation or information sessions would be held at a larger public venue to accommodate um, and more members of the public that might want to come out. So further to that, and to build on what the CEOs suggested, Councillor Durley, uh, the CEO clerk and I had the conversation about the venue that would be um, appropriate to, to do this. The the way the the meeting uh, looks at the moment is that it will be a, um, a meeting where the architect would present the designs that the. Um, construction manager would talk about the costs, the treasurer would talk about the financial finances and uh, those kind of options and then uh, that information would be then available to the community and there'd be a series of other events and meetings. So for example at the Easter Egg Hunt there would be information there for folks to take away, they can check out the website etc and um, get more information about the process. So the conversation uh, I had with staff was that we should do it in a very large uh, venue, a fire hall, old Pelham Town Hall, etc. Um, staff indicated that, that, as the CAO just did, that this type of venue, to receive that information, we have the screens here, uh, it can be recorded, it can be then streamed to the website, um, and to do it in a different location, all of those things, all of those, all that would have to be rec replicated. <coughs> um, 
we could save chairs for members of the ADAC group uh, and acknowledge them and thank them. Um, but then it would be going out to the public in a larger venue or venues. So the, the thinking was that there would be a, um, an open house at a large venue with the sign boards and, and all that so that there could be conversations with uh, the architect and with the ball construction, etc., cetera, to, to discuss those things. So that, that's what um, staff are recommending, but I'd love to hear from council colleagues on, on that. <coughs> well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you for that input. Uh, my concern is, and I've been hearing the com community is abuzz with excitement on this project, and I'm anticipating the large interest will attract several people to see what's going on. And uh, we've had situations in the past where uh, there were some things that were controversial, not that this is, but this room was not big enough. And uh, if, in fact, the open house sessions and all of that good stuff can be publicized that it's not necessary for you to come to this because we'll make that available. Maybe that will ease some of the excitement for people there because I know uh, I am being uh, called and, and every time I walk into Sobeys or somewhere else in town, what's going to happen on the 22nd? And there's a lot of interest and a lot of people are looking forward to coming to uh, share the evening with us. However, you know, with the information that you have just given and the fact that that this is going through and this is a communication plan perhaps mm -hmm. if this could be made public before the 22nd that right. it's not necessary to attend we will get this information out to you that may help to to ease the uh, ease the situation that was just the point I was trying yep. to bring up thank okay. you thank you mr. CEO uh, thank you mr. mayor to answer the councillor's question uh, with regards to uh, online and other <coughs> opportunities. Our plan is to uh, digitally record the, the, the meeting. So um, from this perspective, so you'll be able to see uh, the, you know, the particular person that's doing the presentation along with the PowerPoint slides that will accompany that. Um, our intent is to post not only on the website, but also uh, embed it into our software tools such as Place, Peace, Place Speak, et cetera, so that uh, these um, this meeting in its entirety or sections of the meeting that interest a particular individual or group uh, can be viewed and then commented upon um, at any time um, you know without having to come to a council meeting or a, some sort of a public format so there'll be a number of different opportunities for people to access uh, exactly what happened uh, what was presented etc and then that information can be uh, further disseminated through the wider public the challenge with moving locations from here when we're relying on a certain amount of technology to both uh, document and deliver the presentation would be difficult in, in, in an alternate location. Um, there may be some ad, uh, advantages uh, for space, but there would also be significant expense to achieve, um, you know, the, particularly the digital documentation that we want to try and accomplish so that we can replicate that um, for the public at, you know, in the comfort of their own home um, at any given time. Councillor? Much appreciated. And for those folks that do have computers, it's wonderful for that. I received, oddly enough, two calls this afternoon from folks who definitely said, I don't have a computer. This, again, we need to get the information out to these people as well. Yeah. Mr. Ceo? Um, we have actually talked with Kojiko as well because it's not a normal um, council meeting night. Uh, Kojiko uh, will be making arrangements to videotape uh, and broadcast on the television the meeting. Um, so that will be one method and uh, we're also putting together uh, printed information uh, that we will be sending out um, to members of the public. So there will be not just one uh, but a wide variety of communication tools that will be non uh, computer orientated that um, um, we'll be disseminating and also there'll be opportunities for uh, people to come to information sessions and uh, talk with representatives of the project directly uh, those dates will be announced fairly shortly okay everything's under control thank you and uh, these are concerns that have been brought forward to me I'm sharing them here because they oh, are real concerns thank yep. you thank you very much others to that item Councilor Riviak. Thank you. So I take it from that uh, the consideration was given to doing both. That is, having this in a larger venue and 
electronically following it and, and, and copying it. Was it found to be cost prohibitive or impossible to uh, to arrange, or why why couldn't we do both? Mr. CEO, I don't understand the question. I think the, the councillor's suggesting instead of doing it here, why can't we do it at Old Pelham Town Hall or Fire Station One or Two, and, and equip um, it electronically and in terms of the equipment, etc. It would cost us a considerable amount of money to do transfer the uh, the online capabilities and the, the, the recording for example we have cameras rigged into the building we have our microphones or sound systems or projectors or screens everything's here uh, that infrastructure is either not available at a place like the old downtown hall or uh, limited uh, in its availability at a fire hall and we'd have to uh, uh, significantly <coughs> supplement it so the the intention is as well that the meeting is more for information. There's no, there's no decision that night. Actually, the media was asking ahead of time as well, saying, "Well, is that you know, is the council going to decide?" Council's receiving that information that evening, and the intention is, uh, as we've talked around this table before, that there be at least one, maybe a couple, um, in open houses that people can go to. But we've also discovered that folks, um, it, it's important to go to people and not say, mm -hmm. you know, people have other things to do on the, on the 22nd of March. So if they can't be there that evening uh, and there's only a couple hundred at the fire hall that can be there, um, how, how does one get that information out? So it's important to um, try and get it out to as many people as possible, and and so that's that's the thinking. Um, I don't know if staff would have an estimate on the on the costs of, of what it would take to to not do it in this location, but again, it would be the the purpose of the meeting on the 22nd is to officially receive that information. We had a sneak peek uh, on the 29th of the design. Now we're going to hear from, that was on the design, now we're going to hear from Ball Construction and talk about the construction management piece. And we're going to hear from the treasurer, as I mentioned earlier, about the financing piece. And uh, that information is all, then, you know, spread, spread the word on that information and say, here's what uh, the design looks like, here's what the financing looks like, um, and have information sessions on that. Go out to the service clubs. Go out to the Rotary Club. Go out to, you know, various groups, etc. Councillor, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I do appreciate that almost anything is possible at a price, and the price is likely to be a healthy one. But I also understand, as Councillor Durley has indicated, that there are people who are interested in hearing all of this, and the earlier, uh, the better. And in as much as uh, it's our intention to. Uh, publish in one form or another all of those proceedings anyway having people there the first time I think might might be somewhat impactful so uh, I, I would certainly be one to at least want to think about what the cost would be to, to know what the cost mm -hmm. would be to make a decision I think there's a lot to be gained by it and it may be well worth the cost this is a major project we mm -hmm. need all the goodwill we can we can muster and one of the ways in which we can do that is to be on that occasion very open and very accessible. So, uh, if it's possible to do both, I would suggest we we think about it and, and understand what the cost would be. I understand it's uh, it's very convenient to do it here because we're already set up, and it's very cost effective to do it here because we're already set up. But interested in knowing what uh, what the alternative would would be. Thank you. Do you want to comment any further, Mr. CEO, other than to, to research that? Okay. Thank you. Others. That's so I'm trying to put it into a sort of wrap it into what I would call, and forgive me if I use the wrong word, a prospectus. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring this, this entity called the community center with all the different components attached. It's physical design, it's costing, how it's going to operate, what it's going to include, and you're going to present it 
forgive me, to the shareholders. The, they're going to say, here's what we're proposing to do. So the question is, to set up a time enough for impact, receiving comments and, you know, Council Dury's right, we're hearing the same thing. People want to know, you know, how is this going to affect us, all the rest of that. So if, in fact, that's all, and forgive me, and I'm just mm -hmm. not putting words here, if it's all it is is to put that prospectus out on that particular night with all those different aspects that have been sort of been out there, and now we're piecing it all together into a package, right? Um, and I, I'm struggling with that. What's the best possible way of doing that? But at the same token, we've got to ask ourselves, we can't, we can't do all of that all in one night. So is there other ways that we can roll it out, <clears> which <throat> I'm presuming that's what will happen over the period of four to six weeks, right? Because mm -hmm. we're not going to make, I mean, forgive me, and, I, and I'm, I'm pointing at myself, we're not going to, you know, two days later, the prospectus comes to an end, you have to make a decision by April 1st that you've got to decide whether you're going to, that's not the case at all. In fact, we're trying to build that confidence in that in the, what we presented is doable. And people are willing to invest, forgive the term. So are there other possibilities? Yes. And you're right, uh, Councilor Durling and I have been, some of us have been here when the place has been jam-packed. Mm -hmm. you know, people showed up and they weren't too happy and some were happy. But So uh, I'll leave it to the staff to figure that out. But I'm, I'm, I'm just struggling with, you know, that what I'm, what I'm hearing is all of that information. And forgive me if I'm wrong, I'm wrong will be put into that particular setting on the 22nd. But I, as John Q. Public of the town of Pelham, will understand what the community center is all about. Right? Mr. And where we're going yeah. with it. Is that a fair statement? Um, it's a fair statement as far as the content goes, but it must be reiterated that this is not a presentation in a public meeting format. This well, that's is a what presentation I want to understand. To council. To us. Right. For council's right. that's what uh, I'm getting at. consumption. Uh, but again, it will also be for the consumption of the general public in the context Correct. of any other public meeting that is held by right. council, such as tonight or any other night. Um, and then adding to that, there will be opportunities for the public to interact with representatives from the town, from uh, with the architects, with the construction management people to ask questions, to get information, and to learn about the project uh, specifically, that will happen in the four to six weeks That's after the March 22nd meeting. So you're going to roll it out? Yes. Does that help, Councillor? Yes, that's what I'm trying to, yeah. Because people will have to. <coughs> I don't mean to belabor, but I mean, once they see this, they oh, we like it, but boom, whatever, you're going to make some. And then that's where you get into on the other side of it is where what are you prepared to invest? Are you willing to pay the freight for the tax? Are you willing to? Give money towards the project, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But that takes time for people to absorb and ask themselves that all of the questions, as many as that have been asked, have been answered to whatever satisfaction level that they have, and then let the then we'll be in the stage where you were saying at decision mode. Mm -hmm. That it looks good. And I'm I'm just paraphrasing, it looks good, let's give it the green light, let's go ahead. The sooner the better. And that's down the road as opposed to um, that meeting, it won't be on the 20th. That's what I'm getting at. Not, right. People are not going to be out there expecting that somehow or other, you know, there's going to be a or nay. It's not no. that at all. Right. Right? I mean, no, that's right. right. First, that's right. Okay. Councillor King. So just to clarify this, the 22nd is a regular council meeting. Right. In order that that information Correct. that's being presented to council is going to be disseminated to as many residents as possible. Kojiko will ramp up their um, communication efforts, correct? Right. Following that, there's going to be a series of open houses in at which residents can interact, ask questions, get answers, and so on and so forth. After all of that is said and done, a decision will be made as to whether we're moving forward or not. Yes? Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for asking the question, uh, Councillor Durley, and starting the, <laughs> the discussion. So, uh, <laughs> and, 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 go ahead. No, I, I don't mean, so, or just getting back, so, still going to be held here. Mm -hmm. 
Still going to go through exactly what, going to go through that protocol. We're not going to go out looking for other places to hold this, right? I that's need... what's that's what staff are recommending. Yeah, well, One councillor earlier spoke about maybe we should go out and, and find out what that is, but staff are recommending that because of the way we're logistics. set up, because of what the meeting is, um, that it's 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 starting here, and this is this is like the starting line the launching point. of 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 getting the information. And one of the things that we've learned over the years, it's it, it's really important um, to get to go out to folks directly. So that's part of the whole plan to go out to people. One of the items we we heard about is the Easter egg hunt. That's one of it. So there'll be something set up there at the Easter egg hunt. Hey, folks interested in this? Here's some information on it. There'll be a mailer that's going out to folks, so that they just check their mailbox. They don't have to check their their snail mailbox. They don't have to check their email box. Um, uh, so there'll be and there'll be at least one open house in which the uh, public will uh, the the architect will be there, the construction manager will be there, staff will be there to answer questions from the community. There'll be billboards, etc. That will be in a large in a large venue uh, over a long period of time, sort of thing where it, it's in it's a public information session or center. So this this will be the start and then um, there'll be a long period as Councillor King indicated and, and the decision will be made in the future. Sort of as, as the CEO said, the end of April, early May. Okay? Yeah, what I'm getting at, I'm not, I'm, I'm just saying there has to be an end point yes. when the consultation and the information is done. Right. And that's the date we work back. That becomes, this corporation makes the decision. Right. So I'm hoping that that's within the four, six, eight, whatever. Right. But not to let people, we're going to keep t talking about this to we decide we're going to make a decision. Right. Mr. CAO? Right. The council will be required to make a formal decision uh, we're anticipating in early May. Uh, on whether or not to issue the first set of tenure documents for the project if Council has the intention of having shovel in the ground by August. That will be the date that Council makes a formal decision to proceed with putting a shovel in the ground. That will be in May and um, we, we will be presenting a timeline to that effect on the 22nd outlining those various key dates. Uh, through to completion of the project in roughly fall of 2018, if council decides to proceed. Perfect. Okay. Anything further? Anything further to other items in the CAO's report? Good discussion, and we look forward to the start on the uh, 22nd of April. I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. It's been moved by Council Ribiak that this regular meeting of Committee of the Whole be adjourned until the next regular committee meeting scheduled for March 21st, 2016, unless sooner called by the mayor. <coughs> All those in favor? Any opposed? That motion is carried. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Those are your own boost enemies. Why do you do that to yourself?